Put down to zero, we're actually now recording. So I'm Nathan Wallach, and I'm here with Stefan Ellis, who is going to be presenting and talking about lecture capture with ScreenFlow. So um, I'll go back into my demo. And the nice thing about ScreenFlow is it captures everything on your desktop, as well as your webcam, as well as audio through, uh, if you're using a laptop, through the included uh, microphones in the laptop, basically. Um, so the question is, what are you going to do with that capabilities? Okay, I will, we'll come back to the fact that I'm capturing this lecture here uh, at the end. Uh, but is it just for capturing lectures? And particularly while we're interested in it, we're both in digital arts. And so we do a lot of stuff with software demonstrations. So Stefan was going to talk a little bit about how he uses it in his classes for software demonstrations. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, so a lot of my um, classes, they tend to be very technical with video editing, 3D animation. And so these demos can take up the entire class period. And I found that while doing them live, we tend to kind of go at the speed of the slowest person in the class. And there would be a number of times where I wouldn't be able to get through all of the material by the end of class. So I had this thought of, you know, I as a student learned really well by going online and watching video tutorials because I could pause things, which is something I can't, you can't do with a live uh, demonstration. I could go back and rewatch things if I had forgotten something from a previous lecture or tutorial. So I wanted to be able to do that for my students as well uh, for these really technical kind of demonstrations. So I put together a series of video tutorials. I think last semester alone I did 37 video tutorials and the total like watch time would have been about 18 hours to like from start to finish. Um, so that was content that I could create, uh, migrate to the web and then the students who are even no longer in the classes can have still have access to uh, as they kind of develop their stuff. So um, I guess I'll just go on to the slides. So I kind of, uh, Paul had uh, shown us before how he was using Vimeo. Uh, I use Vimeo as well. So for each of my classes, I have the designation DIGA 351 or this or that kind of broken down um, as I teach them. So there are private groups that are reserved only for the students. So they get logged in at the beginning of the semester. That way we don't get people from the web kind of logging in and adding comments or this or that. So it's very kind of exclusive just the class, uh, but it does kind of get populated as I rerun courses, we get more students in there. Um, so this is just an example of my groups page uh, and the four classes that I kind of teach in there. Um, this would be an example if you go into the group, uh, I kind of break down each of the individual assignments. So they have different albums for the different assignments where they then upload their videos or their animations um, when they're due. And this would be an example of like the tutorials page that they, so that's a separate album that they can then access and rewatch like the demos and this and that. And again, they're all private videos. So the only people that are in the group can watch the videos uh, and they're the only ones that can kind of comment on the videos. Uh, and then this would just be an example of the interface for the video itself. Um, so you can see kind of like the watch time and this and that. I've also used it for comments. So oftentimes when we're reviewing their assignments in class, uh, we run out of time to actually give feedback. So I would assign the students to then offer feedback for each of their peers. Um, so this would just be an example of that. The reason I would like to use Vimeo as opposed to YouTube uh, is that it's it more about uh, kind of user generated, it, there's kind of a less of a, a capitalist edge to it in terms of advertising's coming up. Um, there's no, you have to kind of own the copyright to any material that's posted to Vimeo, so there's a lot fewer instances of just like random movies and TV shows kind of popping up to the right side and this and that. Uh, so for me it's just a cleaner interface uh, and, it, and it gives me a lot more kind of control uh, with working with the students. So, I don't know, is that Yep. Think I so, and I think uh, then uh, to talk about how I'm using it, I think for me the key has been having it running on a laptop, and particularly having it running on a very light laptop. These new MacBook Pros are very light with their solid state drives and everything like that. They're easy to hand around, that sort of thing. And so it opens up the possibility of it not just being for capturing lectures, but for capturing all sorts of class classroom activities. So I'll use it actually for... Um, this is just an example on the first day of class. You know, uh, there, inevitably you do this, these introductions basically, but I had the brilliant idea to just 
take my laptop and hand it around and have the students introduce themselves. They're used to using webcams and talking to computers anyway. Why not have them give their introductions to the laptop on the first day of class? And then I've got a nice little two-minute video of all my students introducing themselves, saying where they're at, what they're interested in, what they're going to be taking the course for. Uh, and so it's no longer me trying to make notes about, okay, this is the kid with the curly hair. This is the kid that likes to wear his ball cap, ba back, ball cap backwards. I've got a little two-minute video that I can kind of cheat and go back uh, for the first week or so of class and quickly recap who their names are. So I find that I learn their names a lot faster than I used to before I was doing that. Um, the other thing that I do is I actually, because it's a laptop, I use it in um, more seminar style classes. So right now I'm actually teaching a, the senior research class. And in this class, the students come in um, every week and actually give updates on what they're doing with their projects, basically. And I take the laptop and it, it stays connected to the projector so they can show stuff in the seminar room, but it also is recording them giving their presentations about their projects and what they've completed the last week, basically. I can have the webcam capture what they're saying, but it also, because it captures the de desktop, one of the nice things you can do with screen flow is you can do this kind of picture-in-picture -picture effect. Once you've got the screen captured, once you've got the webcam captured, you can actually composite those things together uh, for the final video for whatever you're going to be pushing on to online, basically. So while I think the title of the talk was Lecture Capture with ScreenFlow, I really think of it as kind of a, a way, a ScreenFlow plus a laptop as a way that I can capture pretty much everything in the classroom and use it for... Um, just reflection on how students have evolved over the course of the semester. For myself, how my teaching has evolved over the course of the semester. Um, I find it to be a very, very useful tool um, in that regard, which I guess brings us up to, to my next point. So what are some of the benefits? I think we've already highlighted some of them. One is just being able to reflect on your teaching um, outside of yourself. I and mean, it's one thing to reflect without having captured what you did in class, uh, because then you're just relying on your memory. It's another thing to actually sit through a recording of what you did in class and recap and kind of critique. Well, I spent too much time on that. And I, I needed to maybe stretch that out a little bit more and, and hammer that point home a little bit harder. Um, I've been doing lecture capture in some form or another since 2008. So I've got everything. I mean, that was that semester I started just with doing MP3 recordings. It's been slowly evolving to this doing full video capture basically with something like ScreenFlow. Um, I don't know. You highlighted some of the benefits of just being able to students being able to manage their own time with software demos? You want to say any more about that or is there? Yeah, uh, I mean, just this kind of idea of, of continue learning. I, mean, I still kind of run the class time where they're kind of watching the demos so that I can actually focus a, a little bit more individually on students rather than kind of addressing a question and then everybody else kind of has to stop until I finish answering that one person's question. This way it kind of affords the students a little bit more autonomy in terms of how they're working like mm -hmm. during that demonstration time. Uh, during class when I'm still there to kind of help. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. So I guess that puts us up towards uh, issues and concerns, obviously, okay? Um, one, it's a lot of uh, video. You end up with a lot of uh, hard drive space, basically, and so you have to learn to kind of manage that. Two, I, I think where it becomes a real issue is how do you manage getting it to the students, right? Um, you could put it on Blackboard and have them download it. Uh, Stefan has already outlined the fact that he likes to use Vimeo because then he can... Uh, control access. You can do control access as well via YouTube. Uh, for me, I went with YouTube simply because uh, it's uh, once they verify your email address, you have unlimited upload uh, capabilities, basically. So I, I'm able to upload hours and hours of footage to YouTube, no problem. Uh, I don't have them listed, however. So you can you have the option when you upload a video to YouTube whether you want to have it listed so that when the public searches in that little search box at the top, whether your video pops up or whether you leave it unlisted, kind of like an unlisted phone number. So all of my classroom videos are unlisted. So unless I give you the URL, you're not going to find the videos, basically. And so then I manage the URLs, the, ac the access address, basically, through Blackboard process. Uh, but even that, if someone was really skillful, they probably could find them. I I'm not as concerned about people getting uh, access to the content because I look at it from the perspective of, the more my content gets out there and gets used and gets watched, the more uh, that reflects well on me and my reputation is enhanced and therefore people want to come here and study at Stetson University and learn about digital arts from Nathan Wallach, that guy they saw on YouTube, right? So uh, I look at it from that perspective as well. Um, the streaming sites are nice, uh, are much nicer than download because the students don't have to wait before they start watching. You can also link to a specific 
time. I've used that um, quite a bit because I'll do a so, so I've done software demos mainly in class, but capture them via uh, ScreenFlow and then post them online. Um, and inevitably, a student says, "I forgot how to do such and such," and they're, they're you know they're maybe too lazy to go look it up on YouTube and fast forward and figure out where it was. Uh, I remember kind of the structure of my lecture, and I know that was about 20 minutes into class, so I can find it, find the answer, and I can send the student a link to that moment from that class that they missed, that they didn't get basically the first time, so they can recap it that way. Um, I guess I should have mentioned this in the benefit. The other benefit, I, th I think, is uh, absences, right? The fact that I'm capturing all of my classes via this, this tool and uploading them. Um, absences becomes, you would think that would cause students to just be reticent and uh, not come to class, that sort of stuff. Uh, I've kind of anticipated that by putting in my syllabus they can only miss a certain number of classes. Uh, but I've also put it in my syllabi that absences are unexcused by default. And they have to excuse them by watching the video from the class they missed and writing up a 300-word reaction, basically. So it, it puts the burden on the student to review the content that they missed and report back to you, the professor, the fact that uh, what they should have missed. Uh, my students that are athletes love this, basically, because inevitably there's some class that they miss uh, because of their travel schedule, basically. Uh, they can inevitably be uh, downloading these videos and watching them sometimes even on the bus with their phones basically and and be caught up by the time they get back from their their travel schedule basically so um, I'm trying to remember what we oh now back to the demo yes I've been capturing this yes so I need to actually stop my recording here okay so I just go up here to the little progress bar so once you stop your recording uh, ScreenFlow launches this uh, interface for you and it gives you a number of options for being able to manage your content. You basically get two timelines here. One will be whatever feed came from your webcam. Uh, one will be whatever feed came from your uh, your screen. Okay, and we can see there's Stefan talking a little bit on his Vimeo page. I can scroll over here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, oh, let's see. I... Basically, it's captured everything. It basically puts it picture in picture style for you by default. But if I decide, you know, uh, there really isn't anything going on the screen here, and I want just just me on the screen because you know I'm I'm a big megalomaniac here. I like to have myself hot big on the screen, uh, and I can do this. I can resize it. Okay, it does that. Oh, and actually, I should have done this. If I put at that moment, this is the webcam. I put a video action, and if I just move the cursor to the other side of it. Okay. So I've made a video action there, and then I resize the video on the right-hand side of the, the video action marker, that little yellow thing that you see right there. If I move it back, what, so you see what's ha what happens is that as I play the video now, as soon as it gets to that moment, it's going to resize the video. Okay, So it's, it's very easy to do this compositing and moving things around. Um, so if you, again, if you get to that point in, in class where things are dead on the screen, you can just blow up the, the webcam and have that be full screen so you're not a little tiny in the corner, okay? Um, I don't know. What other features do we, do we want to show them anything else? Or? Um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's also really easy just to kind of like split things up, right? So if we wanted to kind of let's just zoom out so we can actually see the whole thing come in. Like I often find that sometimes... While I'm recording these demos, that I need to pause or I need to take a break or I yeah. want to reshoot something, um, you know, they make it really easy to just to again, it kind of not unlike iMovie uh, to just kind of come in and split clips up, right? We can kind of move things and shift them around. It makes it really intuitive. Uh, I think you can get pretty intense in terms of the bells and whistles of video editing, but they also keep it really simple. Um, and for me, like, you know, in my OCD, like, I would want to bring the volume down because I can see we've got a little peaking in some of the audio. So, you know, they make it pretty easy, pretty intuitive, and that's the rabbit hole you can kind of find yourself down if you want to get more involved with that. So, Yeah. Some of the other, when you're doing software demonstrations, one of the other useful features is being able to put in uh, call outs. So let me see. Here's I'm trying to find a part where I'm not. Well, I'm showing you something on the screen. Oh, here. Okay. So I can, on the screen recording, there's options up here um, where you can actually... Oh, they're, they're grayed out for some reason. Why is that? I don't want to call out. Oh, 
Oh, here it is. Screen recording options. I forgot what it was there for a minute. Okay. I can actually increase the size of my cursor, which makes it a lot easier to see, up to like 500%, which is ridiculously big. Um, or And I can also add a click effect. I tend to like the, the radar effect, basically, because it, it, it's hard for inevitably when students are watching, watching these back to, to know when you clicked. Uh, sometimes the sound is little, this little dull pinging, basically. It adds a little red kind of splash to the cursor whenever you click the mouse so that they can actually visually see the fact that you're clicking the mouse at that point. You can also, down here, actually show your keystrokes. So if you're doing software demonstrations where keystrokes are important, you can add that feature so that your students can actually see what keystrokes you're pushing at any moment uh, if you're not maybe verbally telling them. So there's other nice options for screen uh, recording options. So. Um, that's basically what we wanted to demo today, basically. So is there are any questions out there? So how is it first? Yeah. yeah, I don't think ScreenFlow is Windows available. I could be wrong, though. You know what we could do? When I inevitably I do do in a class like this, when somebody asks a question that I don't know, <laughs> so, uh, and again, it's recorded. Uh, this <laughs> screen flow <laughs> Mac download. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Yeah. But uh, Camtasia does something very similar. Camtasia is a little more pricey than ScreenFlow, though. How much is screen? It's like ninety-nine bucks. Is 100 bucks, yeah. Yeah, it's like 100 bucks retail. I think there's even a, a, a faculty's discount from that, even. Uh, but yeah, I don't see. I should say specs. Would that be under where it's under? Mac OS, yeah. So yeah, Mac OS 10. So um, the other question is how long does it capture the board? Because it's not usually a Not that great. I, I think what I inevitably doing do is use something like we saw with the was it the ever the capture ever, explain everything example or some sort of whiteboard app that you can so as long as, if you can do it on the screen it captures it beautifully. So it's it's kind of changing your thinking of rather than trying to video the the board behind you try to do it on the screen so that it's captured uh, more intuitively. Ah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah I get you. You can always bring uh, material in too, right? So if you have other videos or photos, or you can drop them into the timeline, and you know, like mm -hmm. you can make it a little bit more well-rounded, I guess. Rosie, mine was actually the same question, sir, because I've used ScreenFlow in the past on Mac, and I didn't look in the mirror whether they had to release it for Windows as well. Nope. Yeah, it's sad. Just Mac. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Right, thank you. Thanks.